Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Melly Via. I'm up here today at Immortals Inc. with Mikey. What is up, John? We're approaching the holiday season as October closes. How do you feel? I feel like there's going to be a lot of new stuff coming out because companies want to get stuff in stores for gamers to buy. Is that usually right? how it goes around this? I mean, I think that's season? the way it goes for every business, Yeah, I right? guess that makes sense, yeah. But uh, today we've got one that I think is a pretty cool supplement for... Uh, Folks that are already playing the game line. Okay, supplement so, for? That, it's a supplement for Starfinder First Edition, and it's Starfinder Enhanced. Now look, over the summer, Paizo did announce that Starfinder Second Edition is coming. And the beta for that, some of it's already started to leak out. Probably the book's going to come out next summer. And then I'm guessing we're looking into 2025 for Second Edition to actually release. That's a ways off right yeah so there's still plenty of time to play starfinder first edition between now and when that book comes out and this book starfinder enhanced is dedicated to maybe tweaking some of the things that might not be working the way you'd like it to with first edition and i think there's plenty of time to get some miles out of that and i do think there's some really cool stuff in here is it correlated to second edition in any way, like hints to what could possibly be new in second edition? It or? wouldn't surprise me if some of the stuff that they put in here was also seen in second edition. In fact, I think one of the topics that we're going to touch on is explicitly part of second edition, but I don't know if they'll be implementing them in quite the same way. Cool. So uh, Joe Passini, my apologies if I mangled your name there, was the lead on this. Uh, Joe also worked on... Drift Crisis and Interstellar Species. Oh. I think we talked about both of those before. Yeah. This is a Paizo product, though, so there was a big team of people working with him both on the writing and on the art side, so I don't want to discount anybody's contributions there. This book basically has three big chapters in it that we go through. The first one is options for your characters. The second one is equipment. And the third one they just call other rules. Let's start off with those character options first, though. So there's a lot of stuff in here that complements things that have already come before. A few of these items are things that have been pulled out of some of the adventure paths, but I think the vast majority of it's new. So there's 11 new themes. So when you're creating your character, those themes that you can use, there's 12 new species. These are ones that were not in interstellar species. So a whole bunch of new species options for your characters, uh, some of which I really dug one was a hologram. A hologram. Yeah. So if you okay. want your character to be a hologram, if you're a, you know, shout out to anybody who's a Red Dwarf fan, if you uh, want to have that kind of character, that's definitely an okay. option there. Uh, there's nine new archetypes. So basically ways to tie in those archetypes to your characters. Uh, and actually in the other rules section, there's a bit on using archetypes in a new way for the campaign. I'll get back to that later. There's 95 new feats included here, 42 more spells, some spell design guidelines that aren't real long, but I thought were very well put together, 10 rituals, and 12 new creature companions. And creature companions were uh, introduced in another book previously as well. Uh, I do want to mention here, uh, and I probably should have mentioned it sooner, this probably shouldn't be the only book that you get in addition to the Starfinder core rules. While it complements those a lot, it builds on a lot of other products in the Starfinder game line. So it's going to leverage stuff in uh, Interstellar Archive. It's going to leverage stuff in basically a lot of the other books. I'm sorry, Alien Archive and the Interstellar Player's Guide uh, and a lot of other books as well. So classes that have been introduced in other books get some tweaks here. Uh, in fact, every single class that Paizo has introduced for the game line gets at least a couple of pages of new options for it in here. Nice. Uh, in particular, though, there's four that really get kind of a rebuild from the ground up. The Envoy, the Solarian, the Technomancer, and the Witch Warper class uh, all have enhanced versions here. Uh, and this is basically just Paizo kind of coming out and saying, you know what, we didn't make these classes quite as powerful as we probably should have to balance them with other ones. Uh, and the way that they addressed this was just 
uh, creating these enhanced versions of it that are more or less intended to supersede the existing ones. So the enhanced Envoy gives you four new class abilities. Uh, and the way these class abilities work, it lets you just use your improvisations a lot more. Generally speaking, it means you can take an attack action or just a regular action and also perform an improvisation. Uh, for the Solarian, there's three new abilities. And basically, these let you do stuff while you're building attunement. Uh, a lot of times, a Solarian can't do much in their first couple of turns of a combat because they're building up that attunement. This lets you explicitly do other things while that's happening. Uh, the Enhanced tech Technomancer gives you two new abilities, and basically these are explicit bonuses to particular uh, fields of magic, schools of magic, so that your Technomancer can become really very specialized with particular groups of spells. And finally, the Enhanced Witch Warper gives you six new abilities, and it just makes that Infinite Worlds, kind of their hallmark ability, way easier to use. Uh, in many ways. I think this makes a Witch Warper class a lot more functional than it really was at initial presentation. I've seen a lot of people uh, complain that maybe that class hadn't reached its full potential, and I do think that this implementation of it can really kind of get you there. Moving on from character options, there's an equipment section. One of the biggest issues I had when running Starfinder was just that characters outscaled their equipment too quickly and kind of ran into issues where players were going, okay, I, my character's just so gear dependent. I don't have the right weapons. I don't have the right armor. Well, they kind of put in a system here uh, so that you can advance your gear with you. Uh, it works for gear, it works for light and heavy armor, and it works for weapons. There's a flaw in a perk system, there's a build point system, there's a cost for doing each of these things, and it really just solves that issue of trying to funnel new equipment to the characters constantly. Instead, they can take an item that maybe they've got a personal attachment to and just have it level up as they level up. It's a really neat system. Uh, it's inherently intended to leverage off of just money, but I think it wouldn't be real hard to maybe tweak that at the table to get it to work a different way for your group. I'm sure that might be seen in second edition too. I like very much change. will. In fact, I think this is a point that they have explicitly said they're going to put into second edition. Uh, and I think maybe as a middle ground, this is a great fix to get you through the next couple of years and kind of solving that issue, at least that my table had. Uh, if your group didn't have that issue, let us know in the comments. And there is an option in here for adding a skill check, and that skill check can adjust the amount of time and the cost of the upgrades as they take place. There is tons of new equipment presented in this chapter as well. There's augmentations, magic items, tech items, hybrid items, a whole range of grenades, serums, and then some personal items too. So you're really adding a nice amount of diversity into the options that are available for your characters, uh, even going beyond stuff that was in the armory right here, uh, in addition to that material on upgrading your existing gear. The last chunk is kind of a mishmash of different things that were tossed together. They just called it other rules. The first section of this, though, I think is the one that a lot of people may want to get on their table, and that is the narrative starship combat. This completely removes the need for using a grid map. You don't need to have the miniatures or chits down to indicate how ships are moving relative to one another. It vastly simplifies your ship stat blocks. It revises all of your actions that different characters might take during a starship combat. Uh, and the system as it's set up makes it much, much easier to advance the starship and keep the starship at a level that's, you know, proportionate with the average level of the characters in the party. I really like the way they've implemented this. I do think some people may not feel that it's as granular as they may like, but I think that this really simplifies that element of the game and can make for much smoother gameplay. If you've not been satisfied with the way that Starship Combat ran for you, I'd really recommend you pick up this book and take a look at it, how it's presented here. Absolutely. After that, there's a GM tools section. 
Uh, there's milestone leveling. I think a lot of people were doing that already. So instead of just tracking individual experience points for each character, it just says, hey, when they accomplish this task, everybody in the party goes up a level. Uh, there's an alternate difficulty chart, just basically for knowing that challenges will remain proportionate to where your characters are at as they've advanced over the game. And then there's a free archetype variant. I mentioned this earlier. The cool thing this does is archetypes are pretty much in the game as a option so that a character can say, hey, instead of taking this new class ability, I'm going to take this archetype ability. Uh, the way they propose it here is that, no, no, you get both. So when your character is leveling up, they get their archetype ability in addition to whatever class abilities they have. It just kind of ratchets up the power level a little bit and makes those archetypes a lot more useful. I think a lot of tables could have a lot of fun with this, and I don't think it's really at a game-breakingly different level. I think it's just kind of a tweak that uh, a lot of folks are going to enjoy. Saves time, too, for that indecisiveness in the oh, beginning. Oh, absolutely. You know, like, what do I do? Yes. Uh, and then the last thing in the book is resolve points, and it just presents a whole lot of new options for resolve points, just new ways for characters to spend them in the course of pretty much any encounter. Makes them much, much more useful. Uh, and I think they're a pretty cool tool, and I like the idea that they could see more use here. So that's pretty much it. This is a hardcover from Paizo. It's $45. It's full color. It's got plenty of gorgeous art in addition to everything that we talked about, and it's about 190 pages. Uh, if you're enjoying your first edition Starfinder game uh, and maybe have reservations about updating to second, stop in, take a look at this one. I think you'll find some really cool stuff in this book. Well said, John. Got it up here on the shelf at Immortals Inc. or available at ImmortalsInc.com. And when did this come out again? Uh, just came out this week. Oh, talking nice. Talking about late October 23. Nice. Well, well said. Yeah, it looks like a great peek into second edition, so well said. Till next time, folks. Good gaming. Peace.